Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. Thankful for God's grace and mercy. Thankful for this beautiful day that God's given us. But in all honesty, every day that God gives us is a beautiful day. Uh, if He has been merciful enough to us to allow us to see it and to know to give Him the praise for it, then it's a beautiful day. We invite you to turn with us this morning to the Gospel as recorded by John, 15th chapter. We'll begin at the 18th verse. John 15, 18. We find Jesus speaking these words. If the world hate you, Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. He tells us in another place that the servant is not greater than his Lord. If we are going to truly be followers of Jesus, and in the Greek this word hated also came with it the implication of persecution. Jesus was persecuted. Jesus suffered evil things for doing good. I believe it's Peter in one of his epistles that tells us that, that, that it's a, a blessed thing if we bear persecution for doing good. Not many of us like to be persecuted, do we? We, we, don't, we don't like to be poked at, prodded at, made fun of, looked down on, that's just, that's just not our nature. We don't like to be shoved to the outside. We don't like to be considered foolish. We don't like to be considered closed-minded. Well, it's one thing to be closed-minded, and it's another thing to be open to the mind of Christ. And this is where we want our open-mindedness to come from. It's from the mind of Christ. And <clears throat> based on his words here, we need not expect to be loved by everybody if we are going to truly be the servants of Jesus Christ and of God his Father. If we are going to love Jesus, the world is not going to love Jesus us. It's just that simple. And if we are trying to, to walk that real thin line there of, of, of looking like we're serving Jesus and at the same time trying to get the world to love us, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. All that's going to do is, is destroy every ounce of peace and, and contentment and happiness that we could possibly have. This wasn't a maybe-so situation. This was a fact. Jesus said, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. You see, if we, if we could go out there and live like everybody else, wouldn't nobody look twice at us, would they? We'd just fold right into the flow of things and, and we go right along with, with everything this old world tells us is, is right and, and, and we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be concerned about, you know, about any, anything that, that the scripture says is sin because I'm going to tell you, the world is not concerned about sin. The world is not concerned about the transgression of God's word. <coughs> If you were of this world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, 
I'm going to skip a phrase there because I'm going to go back to it in a minute. The statement is, because ye are not of the world, therefore the world hateth you. But now what I wanted you to see, the reason I skipped over that, I want to go back and emphasize this phrase. I want you to understand that if you are not of the world, there is a reason why you are not of the world, and it's not because you decided not to be of the world. I, Jesus said, I have chosen you out of the world. Children, may, may God give us all grace for that and find a resting place in our souls this morning and to understand that it's not because we're good. It's not because we're perfect. It's not because we have this great intellectual understanding of the things going on around us. If we are not of the world, it is because Jesus has chosen us out of the world and called us to come out from the world and to be a separate people. It's human nature to persecute anything that we don't understand. That's human nature. If it makes us afraid, if it makes us uncomfortable, uh, at the very least we're going to avoid it, and at the very worst we're going to see if, if, if we can't just stamp it out altogether. Your belief in Jesus Christ, your faith in the God that spoke the world into existence makes people who do not believe that to be the truth who do not desire to walk in those ways and keep those ways, who have not been chosen out from among the world by Jesus, that makes those people very, very uncomfortable. Can I tell you that's not a bad thing? Because you see, when I have been made uncomfortable by the things of the world, that's when, when Jesus calls us out from those things. That's when we see where our comfort lies. That's where we see where our comfort comes from. The world is not going to comfort you. They, it, it might pat you on the back and tell you you're doing great for a while. But the first time you misstep according to the things of the world, you're not going to be doing great any longer. You're not going to be getting those pats on the back any longer. Remember the word, and I remember these are the words of Jesus. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And what Jesus is saying here is if they recognize my words and if they recognize my words in you, they're going to have fellowship with that. If they have persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. They are not going to find peace in your fellowship. They are not going to be comfortable in your fellowship. They are not going to want to walk in the ways that you walk. I, I, I know I've heard you over the years many times people give testimony to the fact that whenever the Lord began to call them out from the things that they had once loved, the things they had once adored, one of the first things that happened to them was the people that they used to be, close, that they thought were close friends, weren't their friends anymore. They didn't want to be around them. The only thing they could ask is, what, you know, what happened to you? Why don't, you, why don't you want to go out and do the things we, we you and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. You can tell them all day long what happened to you and until Jesus is pleased for it to happen to them. They're never going to completely understand that. It's foreign to them until Jesus is pleased to choose them out of the world. 
if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. You see, I, I, I don't see I don't see any wiggle room in that. If we're going to follow Jesus, we can expect a certain measure of persecution. If not from, from necessarily an individual standpoint, certainly as a collective body of believers, we're going to find that there is great persecution in this world. So far, we don't face it so much in this world, in this nation of ours, yet. Not like they do in, in, in many places. While folks may laugh at you and point fingers at you and make fun of you and, and, and try to pass laws against you, they have not yet come to the point where they're going to come and drag you out of your beds and drag you out of your homes and stand you on your front lawn to make an example of you. God has children in this world today that still face that type of treatment. Praise God for their faith in Him. They still put their trust in Him. And they still hear His words. And they still walk in His ways. Jesus said, all these things, they will do unto you for my name's sake. Because they know not him that sent me. Recurring theme all throughout John's gospel. We talked about it on more than one occasion. Jesus constantly telling us and reminding us that if we have seen him, we have seen the Father. That if we have known him, we have known the Father. No, not in his fully glorified presence because no flesh can stand there in, in his fully glorified presence and live. But as much as we can know and see and understand anything about the character of God, we see that in Jesus Christ. We know that in Jesus Christ. He has brought that to our hearts. He has brought that to our understanding. He said, they'll do all of these things unto you for my name's sake. You see, it's not just about the name. I'm sure that sometime in our lives we've all heard people use the name of Jesus and do it vainly. See, it's not just about saying the name. It's about living according to his authority. That's what it means for things to be done for, for his name's sake. It's to be done with his authority to be done according to his will, to be carried out according to his purpose. <clears throat> Do you understand this morning, children of God, that Jesus intends for you to see your sin? Jesus intends for you to know that you are sinners. That I am a sinner. I was conceived in sin. It is my human nature. Jesus said, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. <clears throat> Jesus said, if I hadn't given them my word, they, they wouldn't have sin. If I had not spoken to them, if I had not spoken to their hearts, their consciousness, they would not have sin. So I am fully persuaded by the fact that if Jesus has come and has spoken to us in our hearts and in our minds, that it was to this intent that we understand our sin because until I understand my sin, I cannot begin to understand my desperate need of a Savior. Until
until I understand that I'm not worthy, I can't begin to truly understand God's grace. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. They can't hide it. When Jesus comes and speaks, we cannot hide sin. Because the word of God and our Lord Jesus Christ is a light in our lives and we cannot hide. What, what did Jesus say about those that, that sought to run from the light? He said, he said they, don't want to, they don't want to walk in the light because their deeds are evil. And they know if they come to the light that it's going to shine on those deeds, they are going to know. You see, it, it's not... I'm sure I don't have to tell any of you here this morning that I am a sinner. If I do, then you don't know me very well. And I will be a sinner as long as I dwell in this old tabernacle of clay. But as Paul said, not, not willingly, not willfully, I pray God that, I, that I'm no longer willfully <coughs> living in sin. But I'm still at it. As long as I live in this house of clay, I still have my Adam nature to contend with. Now, the thing that makes that possible is the nature of Jesus Christ that he has placed in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what keeps our Adam nature from overrunning us, from overcoming us. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. You know, there are people in the world today that will tell you, you know, we believe in God, we just don't believe that Jesus was God's son. Or, we believe in God, but we just don't believe that Jesus is the only way to get to God. Jesus said, if you hate me, if you despise me, if you persecute me. Then you hate my father. You can't love my father and despise me. You can't love my father and persecute me. You can't love my father and persecute those that love and serve and worship me. You see, those two things are, are completely incompatible. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. You see, Jesus constantly pointing us back to the testimony of his life within us. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have, have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Why? Until Jesus calls us out from among the world, we are not going to love him for showing us our sin. We, we, we don't tend to have a real good warm feeling towards folks that always point out our warts, do we? If all, if all that, that, that we ever hear, see or hear from folks is, is, well, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, and that wasn't right, you didn't think this through, and, and, and on and on and on and on and on. We don't really want to spend a lot of time with those folks, do we? Even if it's true. Well, again, as human beings, I realize that a lot of times people that, that, that are, are, are constantly telling us those things, they're not doing it because they love us. <laughs> Child of God, I want you to know something this morning. If Jesus has convicted you of your sin, if he has spoken 
his word. If he has done in you the work that no other man could do. And I want you to know something this morning. If you ever open your mouth to sing his praise and rejoice that you could sing his praise, Jesus has done in you a work that no other man could do. If you have ever been caused to bow down your face to the earth and pour out your heart to God and confess your unworthiness and thank Him for His grace and mercy and trust Him for His grace and guidance in your life, then Jesus has done in you a work that no man, no other man could do. If you've ever heard the preaching of the gospel and it was anything to you other than foolishness, Jesus has done a work in you that no other man could do. If you truly have love one to another, then Jesus has done the works which none other man did. Now, Notice the outcome of that. He says, if I hadn't done it, they had not had sin. They would not have known their sin. They would not have been aware of their sin. Paul said that, that he was alive without sin once. He wasn't under the conviction of the truth of Jesus Christ at one point in his life. He was not, he had no desire to serve Jesus. Now keep in mind, during the course of that time, he himself testified that he barely believed that he did God's service, but he didn't love Jesus. And he openly despised the people that did. So much so that, that he took pleasure. He went to the Sanhedrin Council and said, Give me the authority to go and bind these people, to chain them, to, to, to imprison them, to kill them for the worship of this man Jesus. Now remember, Paul said himself that when he was doing these things, he barely believed that he was doing God's service. Because he was serving from his intellectual understanding. He had not yet truly seen his sin. Jesus had not yet done a work in him that no other man could do. But the day came that he did. But this cometh to pass. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. You see here that Jesus was separating himself. Though he was born of the nation of the Jews, he was separating themselves from their legal service. He did not come to serve God simply out of legality. He came to do the Father's will because of his love for the Father, because of his trust in the Father, because of his confidence in the Father's will, because he was God made manifest in the flesh. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. Jesus suffered as an evil doer. They treated him like the worst of criminals. They mocked him. They despised him. They persecuted him. They spit on him. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. They beat him with a scourge. They nailed him to a cross. And left him there to die a horrible death. They hated me without a cause.
We had no cause for putting Jesus through the things that he was put through. But praise God and glory, God had a purpose in that that his son endured. We hated him without a cause. God didn't hate him, but there was a purpose in all that Jesus said and did. In all that he endured. And that purpose was not so that he might have glory. Because to come here to this world, we understand by his own words, that he laid aside his glory. That he left his glory. Glory was something that was inherently his because he was God. And he laid that aside. when the comforter is come. Jesus keeps telling them about this comforter. Right now, right now, they, they you know, you read this, you, you can't get any sense that, that, that his disciples were, were really comforted right at this moment, can you? He told them they were going to be hated. He told them they were going to be persecuted. He told them that he was hated and persecuted. He, he, he laid before them the lot of their life for a season there. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, do you know why you have the Holy Ghost? Why you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in you and among you? Do you know why he came? Because just as the Father sent his only begotten Son unto us, the Son sent the Comforter. I will send unto you from the Father. You see, this is the source of our comfort. It comes from God the Father. It comes from Him who is full of righteousness and judgment and goodly and, and goodness and, and, and power and authority and all of these things that the world would rebel against. Our comforter comes from this God, this Father. And he says this comforter is even the spirit of truth. <coughs> Which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. If we do things in our lives out of a motivation that is other than the testimony of the Spirit of God in our lives. Then we're not bearing the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because our comforter is going to, our comforter even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father. This is, this is why he's our comforter. He testifies to us of Jesus Christ. He testifies to us of his truth, of his power, of his love, of his grace, of his mercy. And then he tells us something wonderful. And ye also shall bear witness. Ye also shall bear witness. In spite of all of this that I've told you, in spite of the fact that, men are, that, that the world is going to hate you, they're going to despise you, they're going to persecute you, they're going to make fun of you for loving me. When the Comforter comes, even the Spirit of Truth, ye also shall bear witness. Now I know it says of them here because you have been with me from the beginning. 
Now, obviously, we weren't with him from the time that he was born in a manger. Of course, for that matter, neither were these men. But from the time that he had called them and set them apart, they had walked with him. Doesn't mean they hadn't stumbled once in a while. Didn't mean that they didn't have their problems and their issues now and then. I mean, Jesus even said to Peter on one occasion, get behind me, Satan. He told Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me. Thomas doubted his resurrection. They weren't flawless. See, they were still, they still had that old Adam nature to contend with, too. And I will readily tell you that I still have that nature to contend with. It took me a long time to get to the point that I could be thankful for that. That sounds silly to you. To be thankful for my Adam nature. There was a time in my life that I begged God. And I mean literally begged God. That I would never ever see that old ugly man raise his head in my life ever again that I would not have to see the ugliness that could be Mike McGrath. Begging. And one day I realized, at least to me, that that's, that's the thing that, that, that Paul was contending with when he, when he said he prayed for the thorn to be removed from him. See, that's my thorn. And the Lord showed me something about that. And what he told Paul. He said, I have given you. These are the words, these were the words that God spoke through the Spirit unto Paul. I have given you the messenger of Satan. I have, Paul, I've given you this message. I have given you, I have left you with this messenger of doubt and fear and despair from time to time. I have given you this messenger to buffet you. So that you'll never forget, so that you will always know that it's my grace. That's sufficient. I got to thinking about, see, I, I know my nature. As long as everything's going okay, you know, if everything, if every decision I ever made was good and every word that ever came out of my mouth was right and every thought that I ever had was pure, I just seem to get to thinking I really was somebody. From time to time, it pleases God to allow that messenger of Satan to stand up and say, here's who you are without Jesus. Here's who you are without my grace. And I made you remember again that it's God's grace and God's grace alone that is sufficient for us. May you always rejoice and be glad and be made to remember the sufficiency of God's grace in Jesus Christ as taught to us by the Comforter, even the Spirit of Truth. May God bless and keep you is my prayer.